What's going on fish keepers? George from South Florida African Cichlids here and today we're going to be looking at the whole fish room tour. So all eight tanks, stay tuned and come along. <laughs> So the first tank we're going to take a look at is the 120 gallon African cichlid tank. As you can see, they're all looking great. The Borley eye has actually put on some size and he's got a new nickname and that's Pac-Man because he just loves to eat, man. <laughs> he's gotten a lot bigger, he's gotten some color. I haven't really done an update of all the tanks in a while. I kind of like to do like one video of it and if you guys haven't followed me for a while or I just you know all of this isn't just one fish room I keep uh, the tanks like all over my house and my girlfriend's house so this is actually all of our tanks between two houses my girlfriend has three tanks in her house and I have five tanks in my house so in her house is this 120 gallon she also has a 29 gallon nano cube that houses a breeding group of Sinotilapia cobu and there's also a 10 gallon for grow out. So this is also the first time I shoot this in 4k so it's going to take a long time to render but I really do hope you guys enjoy this and before we go any further I would like to ask you that please if you like the video please do hit that like button and if you haven't subscribed you know do so and then you could follow my channel and uh, all the next videos and everything so I do appreciate that you can see the red empress in the middle and if you have any questions you know feel free to leave them in the comments as far as stocking goes I think we have 30 to 35 African uh, between peacocks and haps we have two in Buna we have a yellow lab and one of the Sinotilapia cobu. As you can see, some of my favorite fish are the dragon bloods, and we have a lot of them. We also have two very nice OB peacocks that you can see there in the middle and the top. One of them is orange and blue. The other one is uh, red, white, and blue. So they look great. The Phenoculus Tanzania, the star sapphire, he's doing great. As you can see, the Venustus in the middle of the screen is also looking good the Taiwan still has to color up um, but yeah let's not talk too much about one tank because I still have all the other ones to talk about um, and pretty much the rock the rocks have stayed the same nothing has changed they still have you know a good amount of room to swim I think as they get bigger we add more fish we will be, you know, like maybe removing one of the sides of rock and making like a different structure. But if you guys have any uh, ideas or, you know, just feel free to leave them below. And I always read your comments and reply. You can see the Red Empress there in the middle. He, he's always looking great right after a water change. And um, yeah, hope you enjoy this uh, 4K video. It's, uh, it's a lot of color in one tank. That's what I love about this tank and it's right in my living room so whenever people come in to visit or something this is the first thing they see and this tank is powered by two AquaClear 110s, Arena XP3 and a Sun Sun uh, AquaTop 400 and a sponge filter so the next tank we're gonna look at is the 29 gallon you can see the Sinotilapia Cobu group in here there's the male on the bottom He's, uh, he's the nicest looking one in there. We have two yellow labs in here that are that we have them as dither fish. So they're more sociable than the cobus and they kind of get the cobu to come out, out of their comfort spot in the rocks more. And ever since we added them, uh, they've been breeding a lot better. We've had, uh, I think, like three or four successful batches now within the past month and they're growing fry out which you will see here shortly and the cool thing about this group is that they are split gene I don't know if it's the males or the females but one of the batches that we had it had uh, three little albinos so once those albinos get bigger we're gonna add them back into this group to hopefully have you know like uh, 
more variety and if we could get more albinos that would be great you could see them down there digging <laughs> pretty soon we're gonna have to uh, reseal the outside of this aquarium you can't really see it too much from this panel but there's like three or four spots where there is like a, a water drip coming out and you can see like the calcium buildup on the glass um, so to do that I don't think I'm gonna drain the whole tank just because it's on the top seam so I'm gonna probably put a big sponge in there so they could still be in there the filters can't be running because that would mean that the water would be too high so I just have to lower the water by a little bit and then um, reseal the top frame on the outside and the inside just in case and then um, then I just gotta let it dry for one or two days and then hopefully after that we won't have this problem anymore also gotta get the glass you know nice and clean we've tried a couple different live plants in here but the, the Mbuna really really <laughs> aren't into that I mean we still have that one piece there and it hasn't died but hey and, and as you can see the egg tumbler is no longer in this tank and you will see why soon so as you can see there they love those rocks uh, these are the cichlid stones I forget from what website they're they're from but I'll leave a link to them in the description a lot of you have asked okay they're from Dr. Foster and Smith the cichlid stones you can order them online they come in different uh, sizes different packages and I really do recommend them uh, I have gotten one of my big fish stuck in there before and he unfortunately didn't make it but that's you know that could happen with anything so moving on now we're looking at the 10 gallon this is right now a grow out for the Sinotilapia cobu fry as you can see we have a sponge we have the aqua clear one uh aqua clear 30. we i did a video on how to um how to make that safe for fry with the sponge over the intake as you can see here, you're, we got some albinos, we got some regular ones, and we have two batches in here. So some of them are really small, some of them are a little bigger, maybe half an inch now. And uh, the bigger ones are probably like three weeks, two to three weeks old from when they were free swimming. And the small ones were just introduced like a couple days ago. We have some uh, Java Fern Wendelov. It's doing great. It's really picked up a lot since uh, since we no longer have big fish in here. You can see these guys are really cute. They're really nice for being so small. It's amazing how the Embuna could get color from when they're so tiny. You could see like some shades of blue and purple and red in them, which uh, definitely with peacocks they would all look the same when they're this small. And in this tank, we have uh, we have a heater. We have the plants. That little decoration there. We'll throw in more rocks as the fish get bigger. But if we do a lot of rocks right now, you can't even see them. It's going to be harder for them to get to the food. So that's kind of like why we leave it bare. Also, we do like to leave a little bit of algae on the glass. And if you guys are interested in these fry, the albinos will not be available, but the regular ones will be. If you're in the Miami or South Florida area in the next probably two weeks to a month we'll have them up to an inch and that's when I really like to you know start selling fry make sure that they're strong enough to to live in the care of others um, I keep my water very pristine they get one to two water changes a week sometimes the people that you sell them to you know they don't they don't get that and you want to make sure your fish are as strong as possible and when they're really small it could be you know it could be be uh, give or take and I rather just be safe so that the client you know gets what they want and the fish doesn't die on them etc so you can see the plants are taken off in the back there sponge filters looking good but yeah really excited about this tank can't wait to see them grow out a little more and that's about it for the tanks in my girlfriend's house so she has the breeding group the 120 gallon show tank and the 10 gallon grow up she wants to put 240 breeders in here too but hey we'll, we'll see about that <laughs>
So right now we're taking a look at the ruby red group. Well, the ruby red and three OB females, which I have in there with him. And something cool that happened is that, you know, he bred with one of the OBs, but unfortunately I didn't have an egg tumbler. That's one of the biggest, you know, like if you're, if you want to do any type of breeding, make sure you have egg tumblers and more egg tumblers and more egg tumblers that you think you're going to need because we only had the one egg tumbler and what ended up happening was that I've been waiting for this guy to breed with an OB for about four months because I really want like my own line of red OBs and um, what happened was that the female she ate the eggs after like one and a half to two days and sometimes when they're in a group like this and you know they're they're being harassed or they're they're not by themselves they will go ahead and do that the other thing is that this female was in the big tank before so she's not used to breeding she's used to doing her mating but then she'll eat the eggs for some reason you know and again like these lights someone mentioned on one of my previous videos that the ruby red looked more like a like a really orange but just keep in mind these lights are extremely bright so the brighter the light you know like the more the more it lessens his red also i don't feed this guy as the same thing which is one of the one of the key ingredients to increase your your red coloration of your fish but again i i know what he looks like in person and it's really hard to replicate that with a camera especially with video video has too much white balance going on um but yeah and then down here down here we have all the fish that were in the 10 gallon before my girlfriend's house they got transferred to this 40 gallon so here currently we have uh, a group and they are all hybrids uh, this is the main guy he's a sulfur head OB you can see how nice he looks he's got all these females to himself pretty much and I think the only competition he has is the Sinotilapia Kobu male that's recovering right now and yeah he's already knocked up three of the females and that's actually what we have right there in the tumbler to the left as you can see, I, I'm hoping that he stays the way that he looks now, but he's got a white blaze uh, where in the middle of his forehead, it's all white, you know, like uh, the blue and the orange kind of like stay off that area. I'm hoping it kind of stays like that for a while. So in the tumbler, we have, I think we had like four bad eggs or five bad eggs in there that I already took out. But besides that, we have about I think like 20 20 eggs that are developing which is awesome because I've never uh, bred OBs so those would be great and as far as filtration goes on the 240 breeders we have um, just 275 gallon sponges in each and just a 200 watt heater I think it's either a 150 or a 200 watt heater in each and they do great just with that um, once this male gets bigger he's probably gonna go in the show tank but for now I'm trying to get you know as many OBs as I can out of him and seeing what they're gonna look like growing them out just having some more variety over here and OBs are just just beautiful stunning the plant in the middle is fake I wish it was real it looks super nice so now we're on upstairs to my room and this is the 20 gallon with the ruby red fry these guys are looking great they're about an inch to an inch and a quarter now um, i feed them you know three times a day at least sometimes more the key to the key to getting your cichlids to grow fast is to do multiple smaller feedings in a day and maintaining your water you know very pristine uh, these guys get two water changes a week on Tuesday and on Friday so on Tuesday I'll just do this tank um, I would do the the tank downstairs with the OB and the, the small guys but I'm not really in a rush to grow them out because they're not for sale 
uh, but these guys are so I do two water changes a week on Tuesday I just do this tank on Friday I'll do all the tanks in my house and then sometime in the weekend we'll do all the tanks in my girlfriend's house and this tank it's it's going the same as you can see there is a lot of algae on the bottom glass and they do like that they like to uh, peck at it and it, in my opinion it looks better than um, than just white uh, just a clear glass you can see I'm shaking some food and they come to the top so they're they're very sociable now they all have you know their distinct personalities you have one that's uh, more dominant than the others and up here we have the marina hang on back breeder box and I have I think one Sinotilapia Kobu in here because he was in the tumbler but he was already too big and the rest of them are actually I think OB fry there might be a little OB peacocks and you can see my sticker there in the corner so I'm really excited to get these guys into their own tank uh, they are free swimming they still have maybe a little bit of egg, egg yolk left egg sac but I'm gonna leave them in there for maybe two to three more days and then they're gonna have their own tank which is this five and a half gallon so looking here as you can see this is a tank that barely ever gets touched I still do weekly water changes on it because it does have two fish in there the plant is doing great the hornwort's not doing so great I don't know why that is the java fern seems to grow perfect and the hornwort doesn't um, and here you can't see them but I have one female sulfur head hybrid and I have the little half ass hairy as Sasquatch likes to call him he's a uh, He's just a sulfur head hybrid as well, but he's he was born without his tail, and we're just keeping him. So I'm going to move these two fish into the 40-gallon downstairs with that, uh, with that OB and, and the other sulfur head hybrids so that this tank opens up for those fry that you saw up there. And currently the 24-gallon, nothing going on in here, just have a lot of snails. I was thinking about just taking everything out and redoing the tank but I think the snails are a good thing because the light on this tank is extremely bright it's made for growing corals so the snails do kind of help out with the algae and this tank I would need to buy a heater for it because I'm currently using the heater downstairs in a different tank but as soon as I get the heater this tank is going to be a fry grow out as well um, so yeah that's pretty much all the tanks I hope you enjoyed the the walkthrough and if you did please give it a big thumbs up and drop me a comment tell me what you like the best and yeah until next time thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you later